lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link on the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to this channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Travis, Sleeping Warrior, Ranty Flat Earth, Jose and Arwin. Good to have you all. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hello. I think my auntie's on the phone. I think he's talking to Matt Taylor. Was that was that Anthony talking to somebody in the background or actually saying hello? Sorry, it was a bit quiet. I think Ranty's answering the phone to Matt Taylor. Well, you're either on the wrong mic or we can't hear you. Excellent start to the show. <laughs> so, how are you, Ranty? He's on the phone. <laughs> oh, that's what he said, is it? I kind of vaguely made that out. I've turned him up anyway. So, does that mean we've only got half a panel for housekeeping? <laughs> yeah. Fair it's enough. The better we, did, half. we did it with just Anthony yesterday, so who cares? Yeah, it's the better half. That's right. <laughs> well, I'll ask the better half then. Any signs of curvature? None. Yes, but not on the earth. Any signs of Earth curvature? No. Lots of hills, but <sighs> I think that the entire geometry of it is pretty much a straight line by all Excellent. measures, literally. <laughs> Jolly good. Any scientific evidence of gravity? No. Nope. No. Working on it. Any evidence for the distance to the sun? No. Nope. There is no. Nope. What was that, Owen? There is no distance to the sun. So why do all these Muppets think it's 93 million miles away? Because they imagine that the sun is a physical thing that is out there. So then if it, they imagine that it is physical, then it must have some kind of distance. So then they get really complicated and use all kinds of presuppositional mathematical trickery to then determine what that distance, that presumed assumed distance must be so it's all a giant game of creative make-believe being creative uh, with math because if you are tracking the sun from sunrise to sunset and if you got a camera filter you measure the angle of the sun at sunrise and you measure it above your head at noon and then you measure it before the sunset and it doesn't change the angle so that means that the sun is really far really far really far away right the angular speed is consistent there's no traveling it's just like a clock a virtual clock the a 93 million miles sounds like consistent. a nice number very much what about a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the center of a presupposed spherical earth any signs of that <laughs> no nope, nope. Not even on the presupposed spherical Earth. That's a mouthful. That's what she said. You. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what have we missed? What about the presuppositional value of R? Any evidence of that? Ah, uh, no. Nope. J just uh, rumpus. Rumpus name. Value. That's an R. Just the rumpus R value. Nothing. Other than the I standard model, presupposition by default is not 
really real. Otherwise, it wouldn't have to be a presupposition. Otherwise, you couldn't actually base it on something provable. Well spotted. <laughs> you wouldn't be asking yeah. for the proof of a presupposition if it wasn't actually a presupposition. <laughs> right, right, Arwin. Exactly. Shout out so, to Rasta and chat. What about any evidence of gas pressure being maintained without a container? <laughs> Never. Never not gonna practically, happen. not theoretically, not mathematically. There is no way this can work. The only way you can do it is by imagining a setup, a model, and then just leave out a couple of parts that are inconvenient. And that's how they imagine that it should be working. But in practice and in theory even, by, the, by, by their own laws of physics, in all accounts, even the gravitational pull parts, it just can't work. It can never work. Right, mic check. Can you guys hear me? No. Yes, yes we hear you. Yes. So uh, that pretty much concludes the housekeeping then, unless anybody else, maybe you, Anthony, have you got evidence of uh, gas pressure being maintained without a container? Good job we no. did that mic check. <laughs> well, I, I think you could draw a model of it, perhaps. It would be incomplete. No, Anthony is so obsessed with you, Arwen. He sounds just like you. <laughs> no, Anthony, he any evidence of gas pressure without a container? No, like, no, can, no. All right, okay. Well, in that case, I'll lead us all in the blessing. Radius Dominus, Gravitus Spiritus Sanctus, Arwin. No, we can't hear you. Go in peace, in our you trust. No, we, we heard you the first time when I said no, Anthony. <laughs> Just to confuse things. <laughs> hmm. So I took a trip down to uh, to North Wales over the weekend, hoping to see the Isle of Man again, but uh, weather wasn't very conducive for any kind of optical stuff from uh, from there. So sadly, it was a, a bit of a fail, but still it was a good time though, good time away, a couple of nights away. You weren't exactly there dedicating your life to catching the Isle of Man though, eh? Uh, pretty much. When I, I drove straight down there, I got there at, um, I think it was about one o'clock in the afternoon. So we stayed on um, Great Orm until half past four. <laughs> so that three and a half hours, I was determined that I was hoping that the the the, uh, the mist was going to disappear off uh, off the water, but it never did. So gave up. Uh, went back next morning, first thing. Got there at uh, half seven till nine, and then I went back again at the evening around about say about three o'clock till till it went dark, and well, again couldn't see anything. I mean, you're very lucky at the moment because imagine a couple of different people on in this debate. So on either side of the argument, you've got Tim Osman and you've got yourself. And Tim Osman goes out and buys himself a P900 and a drone and you go out and buy yourself a P1000. So in other words, you're both fairly well invested into gathering observations. Don't get me wrong, the cameras have got their uses outside of Flat Earth. But for the debate or for this subject, what use is a high zoom camera if you're a globe head now? I mean, literally, what use is it? You zoom in on something and say, that's curved, that is. And we go, what is? I don't see anything curving. And they go, well, no, look, the bottom of the building's missing. And we go, oh, yeah, what does that prove? Well, if I go to my begging the question proof of nothing perspective omitting curve calculator, it says that that obstruction is actually... And we go, no, bollocks, we've smashed that. <laughs> go back and see the one with Mick West. <laughs> you know, nobody's buying that crap anymore. So your long-distance photography for proving globe it is now a total waste of time this pc is updating windows so i think is acting daft until it's finished okay dokey hopefully we'll hear from anthony watch the back chat anthony <laughs> Just make yourself useful <laughs> <laughs> well so yeah what use is it whereas you as a flat earther with a, a long zoom camera or sandra yeah world's your oyster look stuff miles away look more stuff miles away look more stuff miles and miles away Earth's obviously flat so you you know obviously there's great great deal of use to a long zoom camera for a flat earther 
Definitely. Well, obviously, you need the conditions to see further, obviously, you know, just a clear day, basically. But unfortunately, the time I went just didn't, it didn't fall right for me. Um, I planned this weekend, though, for a couple of weeks. So just, just one of those things, isn't it? It's all right. I'm sure Sandra got something. Probably. Hopefully. <laughs> I wish I'd, some... I'd, I absolutely wish I hadn't been working when uh, after the, uh, you know, was it the blood moon that was recently? What moon was it recently? Harvest yeah. moon. Yeah, harvest moon. Yeah. So after the harvest moon, the weather conditions were spectacular. I mean, I've never, ever seen it so clear, ever. Um, I did actually go and get some footage from Blackpool, but uh, if I hadn't been working, I think I would have taken myself down to Wales then because the conditions for filming was crystal clear. You, I've never seen it so clear. after the, the day after, the three days after the harvest moon, um, I don't know what happened or, you know, we're, I'm, I'm speculating here, but I'm saying, I'm going to say, mention it again, that perhaps the harvest moon, when it does that, when it goes red and it gets bigger and all that kind of stuff that we talk about, um, maybe that has something to do with the very clear weather that we had the next two or three days. Correlation is not causation. No, but put, put that in your pipe and think about it for a bit, because I don't forget, I've been out filming every day for the past, in, well, even on my old channel, I was out filming for the last four or five years. So, um, But to actually note that after that particular harvest moon, there was absolutely no distortion whatsoever. It was so clear. Um, I don't. I can't just write it off as a coincidence. Fair enough. Yeah. So watch out for the next one. So I'll probably plan a trip for the next one. <laughs> I think it comes in cycles. I think once a month you get you'll get those clear conditions. Well, not once a month. Once a lunar month, I should say. Interesting. It's definitely worth keeping an eye on, though. I think um, <laughs> we, should, we should perhaps look into it a little bit more. Yeah. Stephen Chess is the guy to talk to. He's been tracking it for two years, as in tracking, tracking the correlation of the weather with the sun and moon cycles. And after two years, he's come to the conclusion that there's a lot more factors going on. We, we live in a very dynamic system, so you can't just tie it down to the sun and moon's position. But the patterns are definitely patterns. So yeah, definitely have a chat with Stephen Chess about it if you get an opportunity. Have you got him on Skype? I have got him on Skype. Yeah, I've had a couple of chats with him in the past, um, but he's, you know, his, his weather forecasting is too far down the road for me at the minute um, with all the all the stuff that I'm trying to learn. So, um, but yeah, I might have a talk to him about this actually because it, it did seem more than coincidence. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've lost touch a little bit with um, a lot of the potatoes because of doing the debates, which reminds me on. This Saturday, 27th of October, marks the year of daily debates. Wow. So one year. Are you doing, are you doing a special? I, I might put it in the title. <laughs> Something like that. Are you doing a, a Nathan-a-thon? No. What, raise money <laughs> for the fact that I've done it for a year? I, I don't think No, no, do, do like a six-hour Nathan-a-thon. No. What? No, I might change one of the titles to Hooray, a year of debates. <laughs> That'll be about it, I think. <laughs> I mean, I will, I'll probably go through the stats because well, I'll do it now. You know, there's, other than saying what, I'm, what I know from looking at it yesterday, um, since the debate started, I was on 4,000 something subscribers. Now I'm on 8,000 subscribers. So I've, I've doubled my subscriber base, or pretty much, not quite, but basically doubled the subscriber base. So coming up to Christmas, it was just under 5,000. Um, but it was, like I say, 4,000 something um, around October this time last year. And now it's at 8,000 something. So I'm absolutely over the moon. It's taken a huge amount of work to build, to double my subscriber base, you know, a year of daily debates. And I think over that year, I've probably missed two days. Uh, even on Christmas when I was with my family, I pre-recorded one, as you well know, Ranty, you were the star of that show. Um, but last year I pre-recorded a Christmas special so that there was still a daily debate while I was not around to do one. Um, so yeah, I went to quite some efforts to make sure it was daily. There was a couple of exceptions, I won't lie. But on the whole, it's been at least, at least on average, two debates a day. Mm -hmm. Hey Nathan, um, I just thought of something. 
if you want uh, some more options, why don't you uh, basically start cutting down some debates, like get the intros out of the way and everything, and then make a 24 hour uh, live stream. Well, not live, but basically all the debates like in succession. And you could just keep that going. I have considered like, it. As... Um, what what I may I may well do that if the main channel gets over ten thousand subscribers, I'll then right. potentially turn the secondary channel, which I've been plugging quite a lot at the moment, to build it up for that very reason. So that may become my twenty four hour channel with just back to back debates. Probably won't edit <laughs> out the beginning and end. <laughs> if I'm honest, <laughs> I'll just play them as is. <laughs> but there we go. Um, I may well do that. I may not. I don't know it, 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 whether or not it's appealing. Maybe I'll get people commenting in the future absolutely not i wouldn't be interested in watching it yes absolutely it'd be a great place to have these sorts of chats because the chances are it'd be it probably would be moderated though unlike this whereas i'm actually sat here looking at the chat for the most part you know the majority of the time i am actually keeping half an eye on it um but if it was a 24-hour stream i would have to assign a few moderators and you know ask them to hopefully at least to the to some extent emulate what happens here i pretty much anything goes um, but there are limits, so you know. I don't know. I'll consider it. So you could put word filters into the chat. Get night bomb, okay. Anyway. But yeah, if Good I did, idea. I'd do it on my second Good channel. Idea. And the trolls will always have something to chew on. Hello, <laughs> sleeping warrior. Let's see if you've got a mic now. Hello. Yay! And it's Yay. clear, you got your Yeti. Excellent. Stupid machine. Hey, uh, by the way, I'm not having it this morning. Hmm. I, I want to make one other point, by the way, an observation, I guess, or an intuition uh, about the, the sun and the moon cycles and the seasons. Because, I don't know, I, I've been paying a lot of attention to the moon standing outside during the entire summer and the spring and now uh, the the autumn time and I'm just noticing that it seems even if the wind is still that the moon is colder than it was like it just it really touches me the cold of it at the side where the light shines on me and when I stand in the shadow it, it's not that cold it's I can feel it there's a there's a difference in the moonlight it seems to be colder it's just observation so I think that's also part of the season cycle for some reason. Yeah, I'd have to agree because, I mean, the temperature today is showing 11 and a half degrees on the car and it's absolutely freezing cold. Um, whereas 11 and a half degrees in, you know, in the summertime and it feels warm. Yeah, and the moonlight in the summertime is just pleasantly cool because everything is kind of warm but it's not really sharp cold you know like if you were facing a, an open refrigerator or something it's not that cold but it's a lot colder during the winter i think anyway it would so, be interesting to measure it so what have i been missing uh, arwen getting his ass kicked in your dreams. Anthony becoming ever more obsessed with Arwen. Okay. Yep. And him basically conceding that something else is there. Because he'd have no, to talk me... to Effie Corey, yeah? No, no, no. Stop putting words in your own mouth that don't exist. Something I else? Say... I... No, I didn't say that there was something else. Oh. I, said I'm not I said I'm not bothered if there is something else. And there probably well is. But what I'm saying is, I don't accept what we're told for what gravity is. That's what I said. Yeah, well, that, I agree was, with you on that. Keep on well, telling you. Yeah, you're not allowed to call it gravity anymore. It's called trivigog. Right, or something else, or anything. It's yeah. just, apparently, it doesn't really matter what you agree on. Eat if I just call it something else, literally in this case, Can we call it we entropy? still disagree. Can we call it entropy? You can't help yourself. Yeah, we could call it entropy, yeah. Yeah, but it's not entropy. Entropy is different. We'll, we'll do what you do. We'll just rename stuff and call it what we Eat want. Yeah, but it's not entropy because entropy is well-defined. And, and it's not gravity either, Arwen. 
Yeah, well, I'm not calling it gravity. I'm ca calling it something else. I started to um, write out some of the work for this um, dissertation, Nathan, and I realized that the word count is 12,000, and I've only done one of the five questions, and I'm already up to four, and I'm thinking I'm never going to be able to do this with five questions at 12,000 words, because if I'm already up to four and I've only done one of five questions, it's going to be five times four. It's going to be 20,000 words based on what I've done so far. And I can't get it any more concise. I can't put any less to it because it's quite complex. And I've only done the molten iron core and the, the effects of the Curie temperature on it and the induced magnetism that it requires that it doesn't have um, and the dynamo theory and how that doesn't work either. So I'm like, whoa, this is going to be probably three questions now because I'm not going to get 12,000 words done in five questions if, I'm, if my first and my easiest one is the core and it's already up to 4,000. Well, you just do it and then you edit it. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Spend more time editing it than you do, right? But I know what you're saying. You're at that stage where you're like, holy crap, there's such a lot of information here. However, am I going to condense it and get it more concise? But... You know, remove the bits about your dog and the lunch you had that day and your ice creams and we'll get it right down. Bad though, because you mean you could do 12,000 words just on the Model 9 core nonsense. I was planning on doing five points and I don't think I might, I might end up doing four now because I need to make space now because it's not easy putting these things down. But 4,000 words already, it's not good that. I wouldn't worry. Nah. Too many words? Hello, Colorado Forest. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Hello. Colorado. What's up? What's up? All is well. All is well. Are you out yes. driving? It sounds like you're driving a tractor or something. Yeah, I got a, I got a big old diesel car. It's loud as hell. Sorry, guys. Can you hear me though? A big old diesel car. Yeah. What kind of car is that? I got a 1980 Mercedes turbo diesel. You know those? 1980. Yeah, that's one of my uh, wow, that's, that's one of my daily drivers. Love it. That's impressive. Love it, love it. Are you actually like towing a cart full of hay or something, or is it not actually a tractor? Because it sounds like that. It sounds like a truck because it's an old diesel motor, but it's not a truck. Unfortunately, I don't have a way to quiet it. So. Yeah. Is it in good condition? Oh, it's it's beautiful. I can send you a picture later. Uh, cool, man. But the, but the body looks clean. Everything is nice lines. It's a nice looking car. Good gas mileage, and uh, I don't pay plates for it or anything here. So every five years, it's it's pretty good. Cool. Pretty good uh, I'd like to, I'd like to see a picture of that. I like old cars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a bunch out in uh, Europe and Africa. A bunch of these people still use them as taxis. You've probably seen them around. These what? Can you hear me? Yeah, we just about here. I've cranked everything up to get you a bit louder. Could you say a quick hello to Earth Flattener? Hello? Yeah, I'm not getting a good... Anyways, have, have you guys seen the video? Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, we're doing it. Hey, yeah, so I was thinking... Uh, um, Anthony, when you're done with your dissertation, maybe you can start another GoFundMe to have somebody edit it. Maybe <laughs> Alan B or something. That was a joke. <laughs> no, but but seriously, I mean, you know, it's your words, and I'm sure it's going to be great. But if you have somebody to make it more like a book format, it might be more appealing to read. Sorry. Can, yeah. can we just if you give it to Alan B? You'll get an F. Can we, yeah. I, just I can what, do it. Uh, sorry, Anthony. I'm, just, I'm a great sorry, story editor. Editor. Sorry. Just wondering what Colorado's got to say, because otherwise we've just got the constant droning of his diesel motor. So hopefully we'll get him, and then he can pop himself on mute. Yeah, Colorado, what car have you got? What car, you said? 1980. Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz 300 SD. Oh, is it a manual? No, it's automatic. It's a oh, 300 a shame. SD a turbo diesel. If it was a manual, you can literally you can you can no. unplug all the electrical systems, bump yes, start it, yes, and run yes, the car without yes. any electrics. You just run yes, it with a motor. Yes, I've actually I've got a bypass on the on the ignition switch, so I can run it even if it's no batteries or no lights or anything. I can still run the car. Yeah, wow. old Mercs are cool. I like old Mercs. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's I, got leaks and twenty issues, layers of paint. This thing, the, the work. The world paint. could end, and this thing will still be running, probably. The paint on, a, <laughs> on an old on an old Merc like that's like 
don't know, probably five or six layers and weighs as much as a modern Euro box just to paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're solid. They're solid. Anyways, have you guys seen that new video? Someone came up with it. It's, it's a plane uh, taking off a, a landing strip and it's right behind the water, you know, the, the obstruction by the angular resolution. Have you seen that? And, and it looks like the wing of the plane is right behind the water and it's about to take off. Have you guys seen that video? No. New one on me. Do you know the yeah, videographer? I can't, pull, I, I can't pull it up, but that's like the latest and the greatest proof that the, the ballers on Twitter uh, are all over, you know, a bunch of liars over there. They spent the whole day 24-7 just... What's the distance? distance? What's the distance? Tags? I, I, don't, I, I can't do it right now because I'm driving and I'm on the phone. I figure by now it'd be the most popular Globe Earth video it's all right. on don't, YouTube. Don't worry. P Marvel know all about it. Yeah. Probably. Be nice. Thank, uh, thanks for the recommendation. Can, can you pop yourself on mute though, Colorado, just so we don't hear your engine? Yep. Thank yep. you. Actually, I'm uh, I'm about to get to uh, to work here, so you guys have a great day. I'll be joining here on the weekend for a longer longer show. Thank you. Good cool, man. You. Thank you for joining. Have, have a good one. I'll send you a picture somehow, Anthony. Cool, man. All right. Be well, guys. Bye bye. Any evidence for your presupposed flat Earth? Yeah, P it's seeing not things presupposed. At th seeing things at vast distances with absolutely no obstruction, P. Just seeing them because they're there. Not presupposing that, that they're mirages. Not presupposing that they should be blocked by Earth curve. Not presupposing R. Is that the scientific method, Nathan? Don't need the scientific method for the obvious, you idiot. What's your hypothesis? Don't need a hypothesis to look at your monitor. You wouldn't even concede yesterday that you could see your monitor. And in the same respect, looking at a building does not require scientific validation, you idiot. How do I know I can trust my senses? Well, you don't have to. I don't give a crap what you trust. I see a building and go, building. I see my monitor and go, monitor. You see your monitor and go, what's the hypothesis? Because you're an idiot. What's your independent variable? Yeah, that's part of a hypothesis, you idiot. What's your independence variable what's, for your monitor? What's the cause? Yeah, yeah I've just explained cause? this. So, do you not understand what I've explained, P? You, you haven't used the scientific method or yeah, given yes, me a hypothesis. Yes, I've just explained that. <laughs> Did you not understand what I just explained? Do I need to repeat it because you're dumb? Or are uh, you deaf? It's trolling or, us, Nathan. My monitor isn't a part of the natural world. It's man-made. Yeah, we're yeah, not talking about science. Hold on, Arwen. We're not talking about sciencing it. We're talking about looking at it. Yeah, but it's not a part of the natural world. Yeah, I don't <laughs> care. We're not doing science on it. We are looking at it. What part of this don't you get? That's my answer, P. So if you don't understand my answer, and you're just going to repeat your assertions and questions again, I'll give you an in-depth explanation to what I mean by, I can just bloody see it, I don't need to science it. Yeah, I don't understand what your scientific evidence Oh, really? Is you don't need to establish cause and effect for opening your eyes and looking at stuff, you complete dingbat. You just look at it. <laughs> That's your hypothesis? You don't need... How many times? You don't <laughs> need a hypothesis to look at something. It's easy. You open no. your eyes. End of... You know of... what, Nathan? I could actually give a hypothesis to that. Hey, Event Horizon. You see it because you have Are we to the rescue? And then if you close your eyes, which basically your eyes are the independent variable. It then... is to save the day for the ballers. No, absolutely not. I'm just <laughs> like, we could even do that if we wanted to. Not that it's necessary, like Nathan's been saying, but even that could be scientifically proven, yes. How do you know your eyes work? Uh. Because if you close them, you don't see anything. Okay. Is that, is that so inside part? of your eyelid. Rather than scattering us with more of the same, P, do you understand what we've explained, or is this too complex for you? But I don't understand your hypothesis. For yes, the Alex, say it again. There is no hypothesis required for looking at something. See this lighthouse? You don't need a hypothesis to see it. 
The only time that you might require a hypothesis is if you have a presupposition and you say, I shouldn't see it. There should be an earth curve in the way. It's a mirage. It's not really there. Let's science this phenomena. It's not a phenomena. It's just there, like my monitor, like my mouse, like my phone, like my cushions, like anything that I can see just by looking at them. I, as a flat earther, don't require science to just go lighthouse, monitor, mouse. I just look at this stuff, P. You, as a globe seller, think you need science to explain something that you can just see because you have a religious belief in an earth curve nobody ever observes. It's a straw man logical fallacy. No, that's just there. I'm just looking at it. There's no straw man or logical fallacy with just looking at something, P. The straw man would be saying, what's your hypothesis for something I just see? That's a straw man. You created an argument I didn't make. That's a straw man. You're arguing against something I didn't say. You did. You said, what's your hypothesis for seeing this? And I said, you don't need a hypothesis to look at something. Making observations take place in the real world every day and do not require scientific validation. And then I added, you're an idiot. Because to assert that you need scientific validation to look at something is moronic. Actually, you, you said you dingbat. <clears throat> Say again, P. I guess you don't know what a straw man is. Ugh. A straw man is addressing something else Excellent and then associating it. Excellent That's not what he's doing. He's saying, no, your question is irrelevant. So He's this accomplishing Sunday, everything he wants to by distracting and derailing this show. Sure. This Sunday we'll cover logical fallacies in depth. So yeah, I'm going to do I'm... a special on, on logical fallacies, P. So tune in. However, that is not a straw man. It directly addresses your question. Your question being, what's your hypothesis? And me explaining that asking for a hypothesis for an observation is moronic and unnecessary. What am I distracting you from not presenting flat earth scientific evidence? Sorry, I'll say it again. It seems like it doesn't matter how many times I say it. P is stupid and is just a masochist and likes me calling him stupid. You don't need scientific validity to just look at something, P. Yeah, and even despite that, we could. And I have another one, and that is a long, long distance observation, minimal observer height, and the way the obstruction works and the distance in relating to the height of the obstruction, it is linear. And the funny thing is, with straight lines and linearity in general, that does not come in to curved surfaces in any way geometrically. And that's a, a mathematical direct proof that just cannot be fitted in any kind of ball shape ever. Sorry. It's not a curve. The obstruction is not a curve. Definitively not. Thus, the linearity proves to us that yeah you can see very far the drop is linear that means the surface you're looking over must be flat otherwise there should be a cumulative drop somehow and there isn't so that's the more extensive answer i think it's time that p went and researched a bit of dick earth <laughs> yeah Are you going to stay in dick mode today, P, or are you going to behave? I, I am behaving. Not really. Do you have any proof of your bull, P? Are you going to bring any of that today? Have you got any evidence today, P? Or are you just going wow. to make a certain of the arguments like, what's your hypothesis for the flat earth? Why do I need evidence, but you don't need evidence for the flat Earth? Because you tell everyone it's a ball pee. You tell everyone it's flat. I we just give you not. some evidence, P, very extensively, tying into all kinds of approaches. So why don't you give your 
extensive. Hold on, he's just asked for evidence. evidence. We've got Ranty ball. on the panel. Ranty, are you there? I am, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about this thing that's on screen right now? Um. Oh, you mean the uh, Barrel Town Hall? Yeah, that's Barrel Town Hall, and there's a church behind it, which is a steeple. And obviously, you've got the uh, the ferry that's passing in front of it. And this was taken from a distance of about 18 and a half miles away, completely flat. I think the elevation was about three feet above sea level. So you shouldn't see any of that. None of the buildings should be seen from that distance. What's your hypothesis, Ranty? Sorry. We don't need one. Hold we on, just see hold it. On. Let, me just, let me just explain, Pete. Can you see it? Click on my icon and answer me yes or no if you can see it. I can see it. What do you see? I see a sphere of Earth. Pete, you're just intellectually dishonest, aren't you? Oh, are you trying to peer pressure me? No, I'm just asking you what you can actually see. Just describe what's on screen. Uh, a massive earth curve. Picture of the yeah, earth curving. Go okay, way. point that out to me. Where's the earth curving in the picture on screen right now? Uh, it's just there. It's just what uh, there in your imagination there. There because it's your religious uh, belief that it's there. There because it's not there, but you want it to be there, there. That kind of there. It's not there. There's no curve. It's flat as a pancake from 18 plus miles there's a boat in the mid ground that's at the same level as the stuff on the other side of the causeway so it's flat p there's no curvature here the only thing that's being asserted is your religious belief that it must have curvature it could be cgi though so you've asked us for evidence and you said, what's your evidence? Normally we'd just say, well, you're being asked. But there you go. There's your evidence. Either you're a denier and a religious believer because you've asserted that this shows curve and it absolutely does not. Now we're going to ask you, what's your evidence that the Earth's a sphere? It's there. Sorry, just saying it's there, that's kind of like an evangelist would say about Jesus walking with you. He's just there next to you. Right, P? It's just there, like Jesus is just there. I, d I don't curve see is, it though, P. Curve, it's not it's actually there. there. Is this in my imagination and belief there? He's come to testify. That's all we get, is religious zealots right. knocking on our door. P's one of them. You're a Jehovah's Witness knocking on our door, P, telling us to convert to ballism. Do you realise that? That's all you are. Uh, I don't need evidence, it's just there, it's a sphere. Yeah, okay, so on to your next door. We've pointed out to you that it's not there. What's your hypothesis? Sorry, you don't need a hypothesis to see what was on screen and you couldn't even, literally couldn't even detail because your religious belief stopped you. And rather than saying, I see a boat and a clock, you say, I see curvature. That's how blind you are by your faith, your religious belief. Maybe the picture was fake like NASA. So fake you space. described Earth curve in that picture. So you're saying that the Earth curve you see or in that picture is fake? Because that's what you saw according to you. Are you saying the Earth curve you saw was fake? Soundly fake, the Earth curve. So we're not so talking about soundly. Faked. Uh, sorry. Did you ask me what a straw man was? So you're going to now try and tie this into the argument we're having about the picture that was on screen. You asserted with your religious assertions that there was curvature there. We're, we're moving on from that, are we, Pete? Because when I asked you to describe what was there, clock and boat, you said earth curve. Like a religious believer putting his hands in the, in the air and saying, hallelujah, there's earth curve. I could show you a picture of a unicorn. It doesn't prove the unicorn is I'd real. I'd like you to show us, as you've been asked by Event Horizon, for your evidence of a ball earth. Not just a religious assertion, which is all we've had so far. It's just there. 
Yeah, and that's a, re another religious assertion. I believe it's just there. Okay, Pete, we'd like actual evidence, like we showed you, and you denied and said you could see Earth Curve with your religious belief. Shout out to, uh, is it Charig? Charig Patel, thank you very much. Awesome channel. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. So, actual evidence, Pete, not just a religious assertion of your belief. Go outside, it's just there. That's another religious belief assertion, P. Not a religious assertion of your belief. Actual evidence. Do you have any of that? Well, we don't need evidence for what we can just see with our eyes. We can go outside and look and see the sphere of Earth. No, no, we just showed you what we go outside and see. And currently scrolling on screen, we've got a picture of the Isle of Man between 45 and 35 miles in the distance. So this was a slow pan taken by Anthony Riley, who's also on the panel. It's a huge distance away. This is what we're seeing. These are the photos on screen, P. These are what we're presenting. And they're not showing curvature. They're showing it flat. I have a photo of Santa Claus. Do you believe in Santa uh, yeah, Claus? Yeah, we're asking you for your evidence of Sphere Earth, not a red herring. I have a photo of Jesus that looks like Caesar. Sorry, Bojera. we're asking for Sphere Earth. These are the cheapest logical fallacies you could use, P. How pathetic are you? Not a red herring. Somebody, somebody make it stop. I'm, I'm Tune so in pathetic. Stop, mate, mate. Find out what logical fallacies are, will you? I'm so I'm pathetic. Sure. I talk to Flat Earthers on YouTube. That's how pathetic I am. No, you're so pathetic. You deny the evidence that's right in front of you. And you proclaim your curb at all costs because, as Nathan says, you're a religious seller. On to the next door, mate. You're not welcome here with your rubbish. We want scientific evidence, you know. The hypothesis you just try to throw in our face, which is quite laughable when you did so. Until then. Do you, have, sci do you have scientific evidence of the flat earth? <sighs> you don't need to scientifically validate what we can see. We can see objects at distance. Just smashing the curve claim in pieces. What more do you want, Pete? I see the curve. What's the difference? Yeah, this I sounds like a meltdown from somebody that's being given an intervention. So, the cult has you, P. The power of R compels you. Do you not, do you not realise you're part of a cult, P? Listen to this back. In fact, I think I will snip this out. This is worthy of snipping out, P. Just to show... A, a, a greater number of people what we deal with here on a daily basis we literally p deal with people who proclaim their religious faith in ball earth that's what you're doing you know it, what saddens me is you say you're trying to break your programming you're trying to convince people uh, that you are looking at how you've been deceived by the media but yet on this show you say I believe I see the curve I don't see a clock. I don't see a boat. I see curve. Well, what? What? Ha, I'm lost for words. Isn't the flat Earth a cult? What? It's looking at really something in the like distance, you. P. That's what we've done so far. So on this side of the fence, we've gone. Look, there's something in the distance, and you go, "What's your hypothesis?" And we go, "No, we don't. We're just looking at something, but we don't need one." You know. But your religion says you need a hypothesis because it shouldn't be there. We point this out. And you say, hallelujah, I see curve. What's your independent variable? You'd need that for a hypothesis. Not required for just looking at something. I've said it about ten times. He's paid to be here or he's a Freemason agent. He doesn't want to be here. Look at his photo there. He's just, he's just, he's, he's so sleepy. He can't even stay awake. He wants to get kicked because then he doesn't get in trouble. He's just here to screw with the channel. I've only been here a week. I can see right through this agent, this Freemasonic piece of whatever. P loves to play devil's advocate because he thinks he sounds smart. But unfortunately, he sounds really, really stupid. No, he does not want to be here. Look at him. He doesn't want to be here. He's just. He's just forced. Devil's advocate, Pete. It's not working here, man. Your questions are done. I think he's just... He's going to be the center of all of yours. Where are you, Pete? 
M Fargo. What? M Fargo? What did you say? I'm in Fargo. Right. So we've just got a smile out of you. You're being accused of essentially being paid to be here. I'm not accusing you of that. But is it just masochism? What's the deal, P? I think it's masochism. And a bit, no, of, bit of devil's advocacy. I think like he sounds flatter, smart. Uh, flatter satire. Not, not day after day after day. And look at him. He can't even stay awake. He's being forced to be here. He's like on the clock. My coffee anyway, mug. anyway, so, can we get up? like like what you do? Can we talk about something different for a change? Yes, Instead please. Of like PMARs. Let's not make it the PMARs, shall we? Yes, please. Anthony, are you still there, mate? Well, yes. NASA just now. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> and who's that? Is that Alan B? No, it's P. Mars. I'm so weak and feeble <laughs> when I don't want to talk properly. <laughs> Come on, he's on medication. Give him a break. Well, on our on RT, uh, NASA announced that they found life on uh, on Mars, and I just don't see it in his face. <laughs> P. Let me ask you: Are you actually like? Are you being paid to be here? See what he just did, Randy. In what a way. did he just do? In a way, what does that mean? He said in a way, yeah. You've got you some kind of global whore if you've got a debt to pay back or something. Do you mean let in me a way? Let me rephrase it really carefully, P. Mars. Uh, are you in some kind of arrangement in, mm -hmm. where it is like taking part of this debate is part of that arrangement? You could say that. Right. So there's your answer, guys. So he's either lying to us or he's telling the truth, but either way, not a good thing now, is it? He just PMR? basically stated he's in a contract of some kind. No, guys, right. I think either he's a liar because he's not in a contract and he's just here of his own volition, in which case he's just a liar. Or he is, in which case he's paid to be here. So that was a bad answer. And not he's necessarily a liar or a paid. Not necessarily paid. Maybe released at some point, for example, <laughs> or decreased in sentence. <clears throat> or... Are you on community service, Pete? Is this payback for the community for previous life crimes? No. He sold his soul to the devil, and this is all it was worth. Why is it that you're speaking with that, like, really, like, petrified, I don't want to be here tone to your voice? Oh, because I'm really petrified and I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Blink to I think you're now. Hey, Anthony, you Where's your banjo? I'm, Show us your banjo. I miss I miss Hillbilly. I tried to warn the community that he was going to scam them, but they all called me a troll and then just got scammed. Grace of Sapien, did you say? <clears throat> no, he scammed people too, though, but I was talking about political Hillbilly who scammed the flat earthers. And I, yeah, I think that was I about $250, wasn't it? Hillbilly? No. Uh, How much was it? He scammed everyone. Like he would uh, lie and say that he wasn't being sent. Like he was scamming um, THC. What's that guy's name? Anthony. About he would send him weed, and then Hillbilly would lie and say he didn't get the weed. So he double dip, and this one guy sent him four hundred dollars, and he said he didn't get it. And the guy sent him another four hundred dollars, and he kept all of it. So who cares? We're talking sure. about $800, right? What about um, Great Sapien? How much was that again? About 20000 was it? Yeah, but you heard me go after those ball earthers for Greater Sapien being a scammer, didn't you? Or maybe so, that's after um, you left. 
So let's just say that for argument's sake that Hillbilly did do what you say he did, right? Whether he did or didn't isn't important, but Greater Sapiens still got 20 grand of money that doesn't belong to him. Is that right? I th I think Greater Sapiens is a scammer too. I don't like him, so... There's a bunch of scammers on both... Like, Sean Hufford is scamming people for a fake lawsuit. He isn't, though. We haven't chat, people. Yet, he? Smash that super chat. You're... Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? Yeah, what? I mean, I don't know. I think it's kind of sad that you're just using the flat earth to scam people on, on both sides. <clears throat> Who, me personally, or us generally? Or anyone who's making money off this stuff, yeah. Right. So, why are you here, though, P? Because I'm in a government contract and I'm forced to be here against my wills. Well, don't, you see how probably... easy this is? don't you see how easy this is? He got a channel, but he got uh, less than a thousand subscribers. He would like to put video and content and speak up. He want to be heard. He's coming over here because Nathan has a couple hundred people daily watching and then a few thousand looking at the video in the rerun. He just want to be heard. He just want to be the center of attention. I mean, that's it. There's nothing else to it. Can we not just kick him while he's being in like, this dick mode? Well, how about kick him for yes. a week or so? It doesn't have to be just a day. I don't know. Nathan, do we have to put up with this or can we have better like content? I've got no horse in this race. I say it every time. I've got no control over what you do in that regard. You can just mute him if he gets annoying, you know? So I know, but he, I mean he's not even arguing that we live on a sphere, he's just being like a like a wiener. Is no, that, he's just participating. You are perfectly... I know he sounds a bit fuzzy because he's probably on some kind of medication or maybe he's in denial about it. Maybe it's just a state of mind. But to the... he is still pretty creatively participating. Yeah, I was going to really, say, stick to the probing questions. You know, just probe him. Why have you got a religious belief, P? Why do you have this religious belief in a sphere of Earth? I don't get it. Someone who's trying to break their programming shouldn't have religious beliefs, and you definitely have one. I believe the empirical evidence supports the sphere of Earth. I don't know why you have to use religious. That's it. Now we're getting somewhere. Excellent. Now we're getting somewhere. Show us your empirical evidence of a sphere Earth. It's just there. I see it. Yeah, that's a religious assertion. How many times this is getting somewhere, you see? Every time I ask for empirical evidence, which he thinks he has, he asserts his religious belief. It's just there. I don't have to show you. I believe. And we must believe also, right, P? Should we just believe you when you say it's just there? You can believe whatever you want. Well, should we believe what you're is telling not us? Curvature. Are you, should we believe what you're just telling us? Because you're not showing it us. You're not demonstrating it. You're just saying it's there. Well, that's a religious assertion if you've got nothing to back it, which you haven't. You shouldn't believe what someone's telling I'm, you. I'm not you asking should, for uh... a belief. You said we had empirical evidence that the Earth's a sphere. I've asked for it, and you've immediately asserted a religious belief. I, no, I religiously believe there is empirical evidence. Oh, so that's a religious belief in empirical evidence then, P? That's not empirical evidence. Having a religious belief in empirical evidence doesn't mean you have any. So you're still a religious zealot. You still have a religious belief. What gives? Why aren't you just giving us the empirical evidence that's led you to this distinct fact that the Earth is a sphere, as opposed to a religious assertion based on your belief that there is empirical evidence out there? That you're not presenting and haven't ever presented. It's a religious belief, P. It's sad. Oh, he admitted he's being paid. I don't there. think he believes it. I don't think he believes it at all. He just oh, what you evidence, what you what's your I mean, It's a case of the truth is out there, you know. You it's a good type of crime. You're gonna get people arrested. <laughs> yeah, rather than no, kicking that's him. That's a different like case. A, that's about giving bad advice. It's I like a canary that that's like got out of the cage and. The, cat, the house owner's got eight cats. Well, you know, just toy with the canary. <laughs> you know, just get your claws and batter it. <laughs> Leave him with a few scars. Scars that hopefully when he leaves, he realises he's got a religious belief. Don't think about sleep, Pete. Sleep. Sleep. You're so tired. I don't know. I don't think it's necessary, you know. If he's in the way and kick him but otherwise I, I don't see why we should attack 
for his self-admitted religious belief. That's the end of it. Well, he, he made really stupid things. Right? He admitted he's being paid here, so he's either lying. Can I, can I share something with you guys before I have to go? Yeah, go ahead, Ranty. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, I've got, to nip, I've got to nip out in five minutes, but I just thought, I sent you this image, Nathan. Did you... You got it on the Skype, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I responded. Oh, right, cool. Right, well, Eric. Um, I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to show you something on it because I'm sure everybody that's been following the debates knows what these buildings are here. And obviously, we've got the, the sea truck panorama that's passing in front of them. Um, but you can clearly see where the mirror, Mirage line is here. Yes, yeah, so I moved my cursor across. Well, we know that the sand dunes are lower than this. So if that was, if that was curvature then that town would be enveloped by water because the sand dune is approximately where my cursor is right now. So the only blockage um, is atmospheric. So this miraging that's happening here, which is obviously miraging down on itself, repeating the building, the inferior mirage, mm -hmm. that is happening in the atmosphere and it's not happening on the water. Because if it was on, if it was, uh, if it was water, if that was water there, then that entire town would be submerged in water because the sand dunes that run along the the edge would have been overflowed. Ranty, the other thing is, if you look, if you zoom out a little bit, yep. if you notice that the mirror, the, the buildings are all mirroring underneath, but it's mm -hmm. all the boat that's mirroring too. Oh, it right. is, but the boat is mirroring lower down, which proves that it's an angle. So if you look where the cursor is, this is where the mirage starts here on the boat, which is much nearer, but the buildings being twice as far away, the mirage in ha happens at a higher point, proving that it's an angular um, mirage as opposed to curvature, because that is really low down compared to the um, perceived horizon, and yet the uh, mirage of the buildings is much higher up. But that's only because the build the the boat is much nearer. Bless you. So oh, awesome. sorry. Awesome uh, picture. Uh, I, uh, this is amazing footage. Very cool. And I'd like to say P1000, that right? I'm this is with now the new really camera. seeing the difference, if I may. That while the apparent where the wave, where the horizon of the water starts, it's so close by. If you just you can see the structure still off the water. And if you compare that to the actual size of the ship and the buildings in the distance, look how close that that water edge really is. The optical slant basically yeah, yeah, is that's... really close by, very deceptively close by. That was my point. Look how close it actually is because the, the boat is doing the same thing as the, the, the buildings and the boat yeah. is obviously a lot closer. So but like by wide margins, like the distance between the boat and the buildings, that is kind of the distance between the boat and that wave that you see. Sort of, a rough comparison. It's really close by compared to everything else you're seeing in the background. Yeah. And, uh, I say, you got different reference, reference points in the distance. If you got a reference point of five miles away, something else of 10 miles, something else of 20 miles away, you're going to see the, the mirroring effect happening in different layers, higher and lower. You're going to name the yeah, boat? Well, you normally give them boat names like shark boat or piranha boat. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what this one is. Probably whale boat, I would imagine. I've got yeah, a video boat. of this of this particular sea truck panorama. Um, I might just have time to show you that actually now. Um, yeah, if you do actually... that, will be the last thing and then I'll round out for a for a quick 10 minute break. Okay, let's Are these see off your this... new camera, right? No, this was off the P1, P1, uh, P900 there. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So here we have the sea truck panorama. You can see the mirage layer, um, but it also looks like it's it's creating a mouth at the front of the boat if you look at it. And that's why I tend to nickname them different things like shark boat, piranha boat, all that kind of stuff. So this one being a big fat sea truck, I'm just going to call it um, whale boat, I should think. Very nice. Nice to see a horizontal horizon there, Ranty. <laughs> oh, by the way, if this really was 
Um, cause, um, if Soundly was showing curvature to Earth over that 18 mile claim that he's got, this is about the same distance, give or take a mile or so. Um, we should see the same effect. We should see curvature and we see nothing. We see just a little bit of atmospheric. See an optical slant. Indeed. A straight line from there on. And the optical yeah. slant is really close by. Very cool. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you hated the show, you know exactly what to do. You've probably done it already. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already. Massive shout also to those who hit the super chat. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!